Well, it's 2019 and that means it's time to renew my Google Certified Trainer status. I've been a Google Certified Trainer since uh, 2011. And as the program has evolved and changed, they've added in a recertification requirement um, at the beginning slash end of, uh, of the year. So usually in December through the middle of January, um, all certified trainers are required to complete their um, requirements for the past calendar year. And there's, it's, it's very reasonable. Uh, there are three requirements uh, that I have to complete. Uh, first, I have to log a minimum of 12 training activities over the course of the year. I'll explain that here in a minute. Um, secondly, I need to submit a minimum of one uh, resource that I've created to the uh, resource database that the trainers have access to. And then thirdly, I have to complete a product update exam. Uh, so it's just a test that uh, tests my knowledge of changes and updates to Google's platform and products over the past 12 months. So I just did that today and I wanted to create this video to kind of recap that process, share a little bit about that and give you some insight. Um, perhaps you're considering becoming a Google certified trainer as well. And this will give you some uh, insight into what it takes uh, to maintain that status. So the first thing I wanna just mention is that this program is very, very different from the Google certification program that includes like the level one and level two certifications. Um, there is no ongoing requirement for those. Uh, this program, the certified trainer program, is really for individuals whose primary role in education is supporting the use of technology by teachers. So it's for um, instructional technologists, uh, librarians, media specialists, consultants, um, professional development providers, uh, individuals like that. And that's what I do. And so this is a very important and helpful certification for me to have. Now to become a certified trainer, uh, you will need to complete your level one, your level two certifications, um, and then uh, apply to the program, get approved, um, prerequisites for all that. If you're interested in becoming a certified trainer, I'm gonna point you to my website, geducator.com. Uh, there's lots of info on there about you know, the different uh, certifications and what you need to become a certified trainer. Now to renew my certification, like I said, there are three things that I had to do. And so uh, we'll receive an email from the um, Google for Education team. Usually, again, sometime mid-December, this program uh, or this process begins. Um, and this year we have to complete uh, all of the required um, documentation and steps by uh, January 18th, uh, so a couple weeks from now. So we got this email. It just says, you know, here's the things we need to do. Um, very, very clear, very easy to follow, uh, which is great. A lot of good resources in here. So this document, uh, especially um, if you are a certified trainer, you uh, should have access to this document either, either through the email that was sent um, or if you go into the uh, Certified Trainer Google group, that's it's been posted in there a few times as well. So you can see here the three things I have to do, you know, report my minimum sessions, review the product update assessment. Uh, so there's a study guide that summarizes all the things that Google has changed uh, with the program over the last 12 months. And then there's a uh, quiz, a Google form uh, that we take that assesses our knowledge and then submitting that uh, that final document. So that's what I did today. It took me a couple hours, but uh, certainly very reasonable. So the first thing I want to show you is just this um, this education EU activity app. So you can only get into this app if you are a um, an approved certified trainer. So you log in, and this is where we track the events, the trainings, the workshops, webinars, things that we have provided over the course of the school year. Now keep in mind that the education program for Google is not a, a big revenue producing part of Google as a whole. Um, all their education products are free and so it's very important for the education team at Google to collect data on the effectiveness and the impact of these programs in order for the you know Google corporate to continue funding and providing support to this division within Google. Um, and so the education team at Google uses the information that we submit to say, hey, we were able to reach this many hundreds of thousands, millions of teachers and students um, and uh, provide training to them. I only know what I submit. Um, Google doesn't, 
uh, produce or share you know those results um, this is for internal use only but again we have been tremendous beneficiaries of the generosity of Google in making all these products free for uh, schools and so this is the least that I can do uh, to give back a little bit so the activity app you know shares kind of what I've been doing um, over the last, I've been a trainer for many years, so this is kind of an aggregate. So over here on the on the right side, uh, you can see you know some of my activity. I've done 32 events. I've logged um, over the last few years. Um, I'm also a GEG leader, so I log information about our Google Educator Group for the state of Michigan, which is where I'm from. Um, and I, I put other things in there. That's the extra activity, things like my podcast and blogs, things that uh, I just. It's good for the education team to know that that is happening, so that they can. Uh, measure the impact of that uh, with all the other trainers. So the requirement for this is to submit a minimum, again, of uh, 12 events per year. So um, three per quarter, which is very reasonable. Again, if you're a primary trainer, if that's your primary role, that should not be difficult at, at all. Um, if you have been onboarded into the program, you know, in the middle of the year, they prorate that and there's a table that says, you know, if you became a trainer in August, you have to do this many uh, and so on. So details on that are in the, in the document if you have access. So that's what I did um, today, just put my events in there. I mean, it's super easy uh, to do. Um, and they're just, Google's just collecting some simple things like, you know, what was the event? Was it a face-to-face uh, -face event? Was it an online event? How many people uh, were in attendance? Uh, they're not collecting any personal data, any information that can be tracked. It's, it's more aggregate data that just uh, demonstrates the overall impact of uh, Google's education program and activities. So that's the first thing that I did uh, earlier today, submitted my uh, 12 events for the year. So that's all set. Um, the next thing that uh, I went in to do was to submit my document to the shared resource database. Now this is a great resource for um, certified trainers. So all the certified trainers, thousands of us across the country have created all kinds of different resources, uh, whether they're um, you know, guides, tutorials, presentations, videos, classroom examples, and we have access to this database where I can go in and say, hey, I'm doing a training on uh, Google Slides, and I'm looking for uh, something uh, to uh, use as an example so I can uh, search for slides and I've got 6,000 different things that have been tagged as Google Slides that I can uh, take a look at. So it's a great resource and so we all commit to submitting a minimum of one resource each year. Um, I get the benefit of having access to all of these resources so I'm happy to submit um, some resources of my own in there. So these are all usually stored in Google Drive and it automatically updates. So um, that's the second thing that I did, just submitting my resource, super easy. I just picked a couple things I created this year, uh, filled out the form, and now they're in the database. The third and final thing that I did was to take the um, update exam. Um, and uh, this year, Google has rolled out a lot of changes and updates to Google Classroom, certainly uh, to the admin console, to Chromebooks, to Google Forms. I mean, everything has been updated in some uh, sense. So Google, um, the education team is very kind in providing us with this study guide. This is just a, a Google Sheet, which or a um, slide presentation that kind of summarizes all the changes that have been made month by month um, in Google. Um, and so our uh, goal or uh, task is to review this and then the quiz, the test that we take is based off of the information that is uh, uh, reported and summarized here. Um, I've taken these every year for the last three years. I think they've been doing it and uh, I have to say this year uh, the test was actually pretty easy. Um, last year was pretty, pretty tricky. This year there were only 10 questions. Um, certainly can to reveal the uh, the test questions or answers but again if you look through the guide everything was very very easy I mean it's it's there it's not a trick it's not a trick uh, exam here they're trying to just make sure that you're paying attention and following along with the changes uh, to their product so didn't take me long at all maybe 20 minutes to read through the guide and then uh, take that Google form uh, quiz results are um, provided to me immediately I knew uh, I got 9 of 10 missed one question uh, 7 of 10 is required uh, as a passing score 
the education team is currently reviewing all of uh, the certified trainer material and then by January 18th we all need to have our, our information in. The certified trainer program has been a wonderful um, community for me to be in um, at, in my role as uh, you know a consultant who provides training and support to other schools and districts. It's great to have a community where I can ask questions to, see what others are doing, um, hear questions from the group, access these resources, um, have the availability to connect with the Google education team if I have an issue or something that needs to be resolved. I'd highly recommend it if you're someone who primarily um, does technology training and support for teachers. It's a great program. Uh, you get your level one, your level two, and then apply to the certified trainer program. I am leading a uh, free webinar on becoming a Google certified educator, all of the levels um, here in January. Uh, that My next webinar is January 17th. Uh, it's a Thursday from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern. I'll leave a link in the uh, description for this video to that if you're interested in jumping on that webinar. I'm just going to explain the process, give you more details on how you can become a Google certified trainer as well.